All right, I think we should be live, as always. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the beginning of this video. Let's see if we actually have people coming on live. Hopefully we do. All right, I think we should be working all right. Let's see here. All right, I think we're live. Let me know in the, uh, the comment section if everything is working. I think we should be doing all right. Hello. All right. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about 10 things every learner should know about fluency. Uh, this is probably going to be a longer video. Hello. Nice to see you there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is as I go through these 10 things, uh, I'll let people answer or ask me questions if they have any, but uh, I want to keep this moving. So if you have questions about the specific things I'm talking about at that time, please do ask me and I'll make sure everything is clear. All right, uh, but this should be an entertaining video. Let me erase this and we'll get started. Now this video will be for uh, primarily people who know a lot of English already, but they still struggle to speak. It's also for teachers. Uh, so again, I am Drew Badger, the English Fluency Guide, uh, and I've been teaching English now for over 20 years. And so I thought I would share a lot of the things that I've learned over this time uh, as I've improved in my teaching and helped, uh, helped a lot of people and also learned a lot from students. Uh, so we're gonna cover these 10 things. Uh, right now, and I wanted to start off just with something fun. This is probably the most entertaining thing that I explain to people, uh, and that is that you can actually become a more fluent speaker without learning more words or grammar. So number one, uh, make sure I have enough space for this up here. Let me put number one up here. So number one is you can, you can get more fluent and actually very quickly uh, without learning more words or grammar. So I'll just say without learning more. <clears throat> uh, the basic idea about this is that most people who are learning English, they actually build up a, a fairly sizable vocabulary, but they actually have trouble communicating. And so the problem is not learning more. So most people do not need to know more vocabulary. They don't need to know more grammar or even improve their pronunciation, things like that. Those are all helpful. But if you already know a lot, yet you still can't speak, the problem is not learning more. So let me show you what you should be doing instead. Uh, I don't want to cover this in detail in this video. Again, I want to talk about 10 important, <clears throat> 10 important things. Uh, but I do cover these elsewhere, and I think this will be helpful for people just with a quick overview. So this is what I call uh, an English fluency pro uh, profile. Let's see if I got to make sure. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over here. I'm just going to connect these two like that. So what happens when people are learning languages, fluency is actually a collection of different skills and habits. So I'm not going to talk again about each one of these things individually. You can go to my channel and learn more about an English fluency profile, but this is different for each learner and it's different for natives as well. But the basic idea is that you start out at the beginning with basically no improvement or no skills in any of these things. These are like listening or your vocabulary, your confidence, uh, your ability to speak without hesitation. All of these things are each their your own uh, or their own unique skills. So what this means is that you can actually know a lot of vocabulary. Let's say your vocabulary is up to here, like you know 500 or 2,000 words. But if your confidence is down here, then the confidence is actually what's limiting your ability to speak. All right. So what people often do is they're trying to learn more vocabulary but their confidence stays the same. So it doesn't matter if you learn more words, okay? I really wanna make this clear. If you know a lot of words, but your confidence is weak, what should you do? Should you learn more words or should you try to improve your confidence? Which of those is going to be easier? Which is going to give you faster improvement? Obviously the answer is, improving your confidence. It's much easier to do that. Uh, simple psychological ideas, even just changing the way you think about things, 
Again, I don't want to talk specifically about all these in this video because it would get uh, ridiculously long. I could talk all day about these things. But again, the point is if you have, let's say your listening is okay, uh, but maybe your pronunciation is really bad, in that case, uh, again, trying to improve your listening, you could try to learn more, but really your pronunciation is the thing that's limiting you. So you can become fluent many times faster simply by improving your weakest skill, whatever that is. All right, everybody get this idea? Hopefully, let me see here, making sure chat is still working properly. All right, I think everybody's working here. But this again is the basic idea. So instead of doing what people normally do, which is just trying to learn more vocabulary, focus on your weakest skill. Now, if your weakest skill is vocabulary, then focus on that. But most people don't really have that problem. So people watching my videos, they're probably actually quite knowledgeable. They know a lot of vocabulary, but maybe they struggle with grammar or pronunciation or whatever that is. But if you focus on the weakest skill, that's going to get you fluent faster. All right. So it will get you fluent faster and without you needing to learn more words or grammar. Isn't that cool? So this is what we focus on. Uh, this is in the Native Fluency bl uh, Blueprint. That is the focus of that program about helping you improve all of these things, whatever they are. So whatever it is for you, again, each learner has their own profile. So some people are good with vocabulary, but bad with listening. Other people are bad with listening, but they're good with confidence. So some people maybe have a lot of confidence, but they just don't know very many words. So it depends on the person and it's easy to solve each of these things. And that's what we do for that. If you have any questions about this, let me know. All right, I think this should be a pretty simple idea. Again, you can learn more about this uh, just on our YouTube channel. Bob says, I've been learning new words in the past two months and end up getting no advance in fluency. Yeah, <coughs> uh, apologies for my coughing over here. Again, a lot of people will experience this problem. They will continue learning more and more. And even if they know 10,000 words, if they're still thinking and translating in their head before they speak, they're wasting their time. So it's a much better use of your time to solve the actual problem, the real reason you're struggling to speak, whatever that is. And it's your weakest communication skill. I'll make one more quick point about this, that all these habits, again, they work together. It's like a chain. And a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So whatever the weak link here is, if the weak link is confidence, if this chain link is weak, it will break and the whole chain breaks and you can't communicate. All right, that's the basic idea of this. But the great news is that it is easy to do this once you figure out, and most people know what their issue is. Maybe if you, if you, if you think, you know, my listening is really bad, you can focus on that. Or if my pronunciation is bad, you can focus on that. But the important thing is just to figure out what that is for you. All right. Let me know if you have any questions, but we can keep on moving. Again, we have 10 things to cover and I want to make sure everything gets covered in this video and that we also have time <coughs> to answer questions. Now I'll see if I can put all of these things up here at one time. They might not fit. We'll see. All right, checking questions. All right, so I do like to learn by listening to your classes and your fluency. I can understand uh, you everything you say, but I can, but I can probably mean you cannot speak fluently. Yeah, so this happens. Again, if you can understand me, but you can't speak fluently, the issue is one of the things that I covered up there. So maybe it's confidence, listening, pronunciation, grammar, whatever those things are. So it's your English fluency profile. So the profile of a native speaker is really filled completely. So they know a lot of words and they're good with grammar and their pronunciation is good and listening is good. They feel confident, all of those things. Okay. All right, so moving on. Number two. So I like to start with like the fun, entertaining thing. Let's see here. So Lewis says, I think your method is the best. Glad to hear it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, now he's... Uh, Look at that. Now we're going to have more people coming in. <laughs> I appreciate the comments. I'm really trying to focus. I'm excited for this video and want to make sure I give everyone a lot of good information, valuable information. Uh, I, I have many uh, videos on the channel and want to make sure that people could come to this one and just get a lot of information from this. <clears throat> All right, so the next secret, the next tip, the next thing that I really want everyone to know is how you learn is how you speak. 
Now, if you've been a follower of my channel for a long time, you probably heard me say this many times, how you learn is how you speak. Now this one, this is probably the, the most complicated thing, so I need to get, get a little bit, maybe take a little bit of time to explain the different pieces of this, but it's, it's actually quite simple. So if we think first, so <clears throat> uh, like the number one example that we gave up here, the first thing on our list is that you can get more fluent without learning more words or grammar. Uh, and again, the idea is that you should actually stop learning more words or grammar if you're not fluent in what you know already. You should actually be going back and reviewing that vocabulary, making sure you understand it well, uh, and that's how you're going to get fluent. Okay, so how you learn is how you speak. Let's get into the details of this. Again, just like number one, I really want you to think about this in a different way than what, what people might normally do. Uh, so thinking about all the things that you might do to get fluent, uh, or you could think about this as what do people think they need to get fluent. So one could be like being young. So I need to be young to get fluent. Uh, I need to live in an English-speaking country. I'm just going to abbreviate that. So I need to live in an English-speaking country, so an English-speaking country to get fluent. If you have anything else you think you need, let me know and I can put it on this list here. Uh, what else do you think you might need? Maybe private lessons or even just regular English classes. Maybe a native friend, let's see. Uh, or maybe you need to speak every day. All right, I'm sure you could think of more things, but these are maybe the most common things that people think they need to become fluent. So what I want you to really understand, uh, this is probably the most important thing. It's really the most important thing. I put number one as number one because it's just fun and it's easy. I really want to give people uh, fast results. So again, if you try uh, just finding the thing you're weakest at, you can get improvement in that very quickly and then start becoming a fluent speaker much faster. Uh, but this one, this is really about understanding how fluency works. And so people think that they need to be young or live in an English-speaking country. They need private lessons. They need English classes. Uh, they need to speak every day to get fluent. But the problem is that a lot of people, they do all of these things. So some people are young. I think a lot of people who are learning with me are probably a little bit older, maybe like 20 years old and older, 30, 40, even 50. Some people I help are over 80 years old. People are still continuing to learn. Uh, but they think they need to live in an English-speaking country. So many people even do live in English-speaking countries. They get private lessons, they take English classes, they have native friends, they speak every day, but they're still not fluent. So how is this possible? How can you get all of these things? How can you be young? Let's say you're 25 years old, you're 30 years old, that's still pretty young. Uh, you live in an English-speaking country, you get private lessons or some kind of English class, you have native friends, and maybe you even try to speak every day but you still can't speak fluently. How is that possible? How is that possible to get all of these things and not be a fluent speaker? What is missing from this? All right. Now, this is what I discovered uh, when I was learning to get fluent because I spent 15 years struggling to learn different languages. I tried to learn Latin in elementary school. I had to try to learn French in uh, high school and then Spanish in college, and I failed at all of those. Even when I came to Japan, so I'll put immersion up here, and that's basically the same thing as like having a native friend or living in an English-speaking country. These are all related. Uh, but immersion, just being around the language all the time, so even with immersion, I was in Japan for about a year trying to practice doing all of these things. I was, how old was I? I was about 23 when I came to Japan, 22, 23. Uh, so I was living in Japan. I was getting some private lessons. I tried those for a little bit. I actually took English classes. I had some native friends and I tried speaking every day and I still didn't get fluent. Still didn't get fluent. Yes, don't worry, I'm looking at chat. I'm trying not to pay attention to it. <laughs> trying not to pay attention to it uh, as I go through these just to make sure that I, I get through everything. 
All right. So this was my situation too. So none of these things worked for me and none of those things worked for a lot of people. And the reason is because there's something much more fundamental before all of this. All right. And if you do this thing the wrong way, then it doesn't matter if you get all of this stuff. All right. Yes, Tom, hit that like button. Hit that like button. I want to see the little boop, 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 boop. It would be nice like Instagram does that, little hearts that come up. So this thing over here, this is the actual important thing, and this is how you learn. This is how you learn. All right, Sheila's very excited over there <laughs> with the heart eyes. I like to see that. All right, so even if you get all of these things, many people who are learning languages, this is not just for English learning, this is for any language you could learn. Lots of people get all of these things. Are you fluent in Japanese? Yes. So I will explain it right now. So even after living in Japan for a year and doing really most of these things, actually all these things, I still couldn't speak. And the reason why is because of this, something much more fundamental about how you learn. And that's how you learn is how you speak. So it's really the way you learn, and I'm going to explain this in actually just really right now. Uh, but what I discovered actually watching kids, so playing in Japan while I was walking in a park one day, I happened to see some kids playing with their parents, and I just noticed how they're actually speaking with each other. And so the parents are talking with the kids, and they're able to communicate, and those children were maybe two years old, three years old, four years old, and they were speaking better than I was. And the thing was, because those Japanese children were learning Japanese as a first language. So they were getting Japanese as a first language lessons from their parents. But I was learning Japanese through English. All right. So over here, this is really the most important point about learning. And if you get this part wrong, all of this stuff, it doesn't matter. You could try speaking every day. And if you mess this up over here, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is how you learn, how you learn, how you learn. So let's contrast this very quickly. So um, my, my, my personal example is from learning Japanese and getting fluent in Japanese. But the way I did that was because I started learning Japanese as a first language. And so all these things over here, we're going to just use the English example because all of you guys are English learners over here. So English. We'll just say English uh, as, a, as a first language lessons. So typically what people do in school is they're getting English as a second language lessons. And this means that you're learning the language through your native language. And remember that how you learn is how you speak. So if you translate when you learn, you will translate when you speak. If you think about grammar rules when you learn, you will think about grammar rules when you speak. If you have trouble with pronunciation when you learn, you will have trouble with your pronunciation when you speak. Okay? So for me, just again going back to the Japanese example, I'm looking at those Japanese kids and they're learning everything all in Japanese. They're getting all of their pronunciation, they're learning grammar without studying rules. They're actually understanding what their parents are saying because their parents are giving them very simple things. I'll explain exactly what they're doing, but really the most important point, I really want to get this clue uh, or this, like, really the most important thing about language learning is it it's this over here. And for you English learners, how you learn is how you speak. So if you're learning the wrong way, then it doesn't matter if you're young. You can be young and get regular traditional classes and it's not going to help you speak. All right? Ying Yang, I want you to call a whole bunch of people and tell them to watch the video. <laughs> Just get on the phone and call everybody to say you got to watch this video. All right? So it's again, it's awesome if people like the video, comment and share it and subscribe, but I'm really here for the people that really understand that they actually want to become speakers of, you know, fluent, confident English. So some people are just, they're really just trying to learn more vocabulary, which is fine. But for me, uh, the smaller number of people who actually want to communicate fluently and confidently, that's who I'm looking for. So if you know those people, send them my way. 
all right? So remember, most people are learning through translations and that's why they translate when they speak. Most people are learning through studying grammar rules and that's why I'm going to, um, I get stuck thinking about, is that word correct? Am I going to say the right thing? Is my pronunciation going to be correct? I have lots of worries because of how I learn. Okay, so if you're learning a language, you should be learning that language as a first language. So you need, like in the English example, you need English as a first language lesson. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to explain exactly what that means, but hopefully I want people to, to recognize like the fluency is not over here, it's over here. So if you get this right, if you get English as a fluent language or English as a fluent, yes, English as a first language, <laughs> now I'm confusing myself. So if you learn English as a first language, then these things become much more powerful. So it's fine to speak if you want to, but speaking doesn't help if you don't actually understand the language like a native. So the goal of this is to actually help you understand well so you feel confident speaking. If you don't understand well, you will not feel confident. If you are thinking about grammar when you're learning, you will not feel confident about speaking. You will try to say something else or say something easier. You will not want to use certain grammar points or vocabulary or whatever because you just don't feel confident about using them. And that means you don't understand them like a native, all right? So let's talk about how this works. So again, number one, you can get fluent uh, or become a more fluent, confident speaker without learning more words or language. Can I be your wife? <laughs> Look, why, you could, all right, have like a wife. Let's see, you put wife on here. So wife, like even me, so I am married. I'm sorry, I am spoken for, oh my goodness. But yeah, you could put wife or husband or whatever, like boyfriend or girlfriend. A lot of people think they need that too. So that's a good, a good thing over there. But it doesn't matter if they're giving you horrible lessons. <laughs> so if you are married to someone or you are, have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, then it doesn't matter if you're, if you're, you know, if you're getting bad lessons. Okay, but nice to see lots of love in the chat. <laughs> all right, so let's go on to talk about two. All right, so we got two here. We're going to do three, four, and five and talk about exactly what this means and how to do that thing. Okay, so what does it mean to get English as a first language lesson? So what are the things you actually need? But hopefully, does everybody get this? Everybody gets this idea? So all the things that people think they need, these are great. If you can get some private lessons, like that's not a bad thing, but if those private lessons are teaching you English as a second language, that's probably going to keep you stuck. So even if you get private lessons, private lessons don't guarantee fluency. Okay, all right, here we go. So let's go on. So we'll keep those things in mind as we talk about the next ones. So the next three are the different pieces of learning like a native, all right? So we have three, four, and five. So all three of these, these are English as a, oh, I'm probably not gonna fit this on here, but these are all English as a first language. So English as a first language lessons. So the three things that you need, uh, people who've been following me for a while will probably know, uh, like they probably heard me talk about these many, many times, but especially if you're new, these are very important. First, number one is you need real English. Now this should be a very obvious one. Uh, so real English meaning that if you have classroom lessons that are teaching you, the vocabulary is more, maybe it's clearer and it's more simple, maybe the vocabulary is a little bit more slow, uh, or it's not actually the same vocabulary that natives would use. So someone might say hello in an English class, but someone in the real world might say, how's it going? And if you're not prepared for that, then you're not going to be able to understand or communicate well in real life. So you can speak in a classroom, but it's going to be more difficult for you in real life. All right. So we need to learn real English. This means just learning the same things that natives are learning. So things in the classroom are fine, but you also need to be learning the real things that natives are using. So the real vocabulary, real slang, real phrases, all of the uh, vocabulary, the speed, the different, at, like, the different accents and pitches and all those different things. So howdy, same thing. So people say different things in real life and you have to be prepared for that. All right, so real English, this should be the most basic thing to understand. Everyone probably has uh, like 
a lot of you know the same things in their own language while they're while they're learning their native language so how you learn in your classroom when you're growing up and you're learning the language and then that's when you're maybe using something different with your friends outside of classroom that kind of thing all right so real english second thing we need understandable messages understandable messages now this is a bit ironic because i wrote this and it's not very understandable <laughs> what i wrote but understandable messages this means when i'm teaching you something you can understand it all in english so it's making sure that you can understand that's my job as the teacher to make sure that you understand what i'm saying it's not your job to figure the language out it's my job to make everything clear and easy to understand. And that means showing you how things work all in English. So if I can do that, then I'm helping you learn again as a first language, the same way your parents taught you when you were young, the same way you learn new things now. Okay? So I'm giving, I'm giving you real English, but I'm not giving you traditional lessons where we're going to do some gap filling exercises or something, uh, or I'm going to have you like learn a bunch of rules. I really want to help you understand things as a native. Let me see, see if Bruno's got a question over here. You're teaching foundation based on Krasen's research about through comprehensible input it makes total sense. Yes. So I discovered this same thing and then I found Krasen and he confirmed what I had what I had learned in the same way okay <clears throat> so Dr. Crash and, and that's because we all learn languages the same way so this video the people I help are English learners but you can apply all of these same principles to learning every language yes so Mrs. David in real life people often mumble that's true so if I'm in this video and I'm if I'm speaking like that you can't understand what I'm saying Am I going to be a good teacher? Am I being understandable? Not really, all right? But you need a combination of these things. Do, do you sew courses? Uh, yes, if you're asking about courses, you can click on the link in the description to learn more about those. Uh, but this, I really want to just make this, this is, everybody should have this information. Everybody should know all this information. Uh, but then people who, uh, who would like to learn with me more, they can feel free to do that, or they can try to do these things themselves. All right. So the third thing, let's see if anybody knows what this is. Everybody who's been following me for a while should know this. We talk about this all the time. I'll give people a moment to, to write something down there as I check uh, comments over here. Uh, I do <clears throat> apologize if I'm skipping some comments. Again, I'm trying to be quick. We've already been going for about half an hour. Let's see. So, hello, I'm always watching your, whoa, Dran's got it. Very good. All right, so I'm always watching your uh, videos offline. It's my first time watching. So, hi, teacher, understand. 99% would still can't speak. What should I do? Sorry to get you out of the subject of the vid. Well, actually, that is part of the subject of the vid. That's what we addressed in the first number one over here. So, you can get more fluent without learning more by focusing on the, and this is really the fastest way uh, to make progress. So if you want quick progress, focus on the thing that you are struggling with most. So don't try to learn more words. Focus on your confidence or your listening or your pronunciation or whatever, uh, and that's how you get fluent. All right, so let's see uh, who had that. So Dran says, naturally varied review. And, a, and I, I can't spell and write at the same time. N-A-T-U-R-A-L-L-Y, varied. All right, now this is really the most important piece of the puzzle out of these three, so you can really learn real English anywhere. That's all over the place. And even understandable messages, you can probably find those somewhere. You really just learn in the real world by getting examples of people doing different things. So if I see somebody drop something on their head and they say, Ita, and I'm in Japan, then I learn, oh, really strong understanding is with the naturally varied review because I need to hear different people saying that. I need to hear it in different uh, situations, hear it in different contexts, uh, or even different grammar, like so I could get different tenses or different situations. So naturally varied review is what simulates the native environment for learning. Okay? So I don't hear, like, just someone like one Japanese person, uh, something drops on their head and they say, itai. I hear like, you know, 10 other people say the same thing, but in different contexts. So someone else gets hit and they're like, it, it, and they pronounce it a little bit different. 
So each person is going to sound a little bit different. I'm not trying to sound like a Japanese textbook. I want to listen to lots of different people and hear how they sound, and that's going to give me, okay, what, my, what, what should my natural speaking voice be in Japanese? So should I say ita or ite or something else? Or kso or, you know, something, whatever that thing is. All right? Hopefully this makes sense. And this will make sense, especially if this is your first video of mine uh, that, that you're getting from like just watching my channel or something. <clears throat> I recommend you go through and watch a few more videos so that you can see lots of examples of this, especially the espresso video I made, so how to make espresso. And that's just one example of naturally varied review. Uh, and so when you're going through and learning, you will see lots of different examples of real English. You can understand what people are doing, and then you're seeing lots of different examples. Now, a friend of mine, uh, they were talking about, uh, what was that, maybe uh, Duolingo? They made some change in their algorithm or what, something about like the learning platform recently uh, where they had, they had people go back and review information, but a lot of people left the platform because they didn't want to review. <laughs> And so this is really the number one problem that people have with language learning is they don't want to review because old information is boring. Everybody wants news. They want new information. All right. So the way to keep the review, to keep the information new while still getting the review is naturally varied review. You need to have varied review. Varied review. So I'm not a fan of Duolingo. I don't use it personally. Uh, and it's, you know, having, even having an app, it's like it's one piece of something that you should be learning, but you really should be learning everything as a first language, however you learn. All right. Hopefully this makes sense. So we talked so far about number two, how you learn is how you speak. So if you learn through translations, you will think about translations when you speak. If you don't learn real English, then you won't be speaking real English. Okay, you won't understand what people are talking about. You won't get jokes. You won't understand references in, you know, English movies, that kind of thing. And if you don't learn with understandable messages, that means you're just learning through grammar rules or studying vocabulary lists or definitions, that kind of thing, doing exercises. And that's, of course, not going to help you speak. So knowing information is different from being able to communicate fluently. And this is why lots of people can pass tests so they can take an English test. Pardon me, but there's always some kind of fire something over here. Uh, so you can, you can pass an English test and still be a bad speaker, especially if that test is not testing your speaking ability. So when you're taking a written test, especially, you have time to think and maybe translate something in your head. <clears throat> but in a conversation, you need to communicate quickly. You need to respond automatically and actually think quickly and without having to get stuck by thinking about the wrong words or the wrong pronunciation or grammar or whatever that is. All right. That's why it's so important. This is the most important thing. So before you're thinking about learning in an English speaking country or getting private lessons or any of that stuff, you have to be learning English as a first language. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Talking more about my purple shirt over there. All right, so I think everybody's getting this over here, three, four, and five. All right, uh, the next thing, I wanna talk a little bit about, about this here. Uh, so number six is that fluency is really a feeling you get when you understand something. So people will ask me, how much naturally varied review do you need? And it just depends on the word or phrase or grammar point. Some things you can understand them very easily but maybe you should still get a few examples of review just to hear different people pronouncing the word or phrase differently or hearing something in a different context, something like that. Uh, and so again, the number six thing is fluency is a feeling. So when you know something really well, like you don't forget it, it really feels good, you understand something very well, it's a feeling you get when you know something, you really understand it. So I'm going to give you just a quick example of how this works just to have you feel that same feeling over here. I'm going to have to erase this, though, uh, just to make sure this is clear. Now, if some people, all right, some of you have been following me for a while will know this example, but it's probably my favorite example for helping people understand the feeling 
of understanding because it's really the feeling that you're going for. All right, somebody, uh, Yang Yang Kink, how many words in English written different from pronunciation? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, there are too many words. There are like 100,000 some words in the English language um, and in common use. Uh, and there are more words than that. Uh, but it, it depends on the pronunciation. In general, the rules of phonics work about 84% of the time. And most of the vocabulary people using uh, in their everyday life, then they can understand that quite easily uh, if they know the rules of phonics. So this is what we teach in Frederick. So actually how to learn the, ph the phonetic rules of English, as well as the sight words that are common words that don't follow those rules, okay? So uh, if we're gonna go on here, so number six, so how much review do you need? You really want to review until you get that feeling of understanding. So let me give you just a quick example of this. So traditional lessons, they really want you to maybe review something again and again and again, and then hopefully you remember that, but repetition really doesn't help you learn anything new. It's the varied review that gets you fluent, not just repeating things. It's really difficult just to repeat more and try to get more information out of the exact same thing, okay? So, uh, if you know the answer to this, don't say anything in the chat. This is for especially new people who are just joining me. Uh, but I'm going to teach you a new language right here. This is probably my favorite example. So we're going to teach you, we're going to give you like a regular English lesson. Uh, but actually this is in a different language. It's a new language. It's not a real language though. Just imagine I'm teaching you an alien language. I'm just going to teach you some numbers here. So if you've seen this before, don't say anything, don't ruin it for people. But I'm going to give you the alien list of these letters or these numbers here, and then I'm going to give you one minute to try to remember them. We won't even give you that long. I want to keep the video going. Uh, but I'm gonna just draw them up here for you. So I'm gonna write uh, the alien, let's see here. <clears throat> Now, I will give you a little bit of time to try to memorize all of these. Now, this is an example of a bad alien language lesson. So I'm trying to teach you a language that this is the way people normally teach languages here. So they give you translations and they're giving you information like this, like, okay, we need to memorize this, just take some time, make some flashcards and see if you can memorize this information. All right, I'll give you a few more seconds See if you can memorize that, and then I will give you a test. Now, most people, even if you can memorize that, you will probably not still feel very confident using those things. You have to think a lot, like, okay, is that this thing? And you're maybe trying to remember it somehow. But this is the typical way that people are learning. So when I used to teach in the classroom here in Japan when I first arrived, then I would be... Like I was just, I was kind of team teaching with a Japanese teacher. <clears throat> and so the Japanese teacher would usually write a whole bunch of things in Japanese. And then there would be the English example, something like that. So they're again, learning English as a second language rather than learning English as a first language. Okay, all finished. Time to erase this. All right. Time for your quiz. You guys talking about the times over there, time zones? All right, uh, I just want you to translate this in the chat. All right, as a Chinese, I'm desperate to find out no one in my town who speaks English. Yes, but uh, as you will learn in this video, you don't need anybody to speak with if you're learning as a, like, if you're learning English as a first language, you're getting English as a first language lessons, then it doesn't matter. It's nice to have people to speak with, but the most important thing, as I showed in number two, is how you learn. How you learn is how you speak. All right, so here we go. Let me give you a, uh, a couple of numbers over here. And we'll do, let's see. Okay. So just try to translate that, just write these numbers down in the chat if you know what this is, even if you can just maybe get a few of those. So remember, this is an example of a bad lesson. If you don't know these things, if you can't remember them, that's okay, all right? <laughs> the whole point of this video uh, is to show people how you should be not learning a language, all right? <clears throat> Let me check chat again. Again, I apologize if I'm skipping 
uh, chats. I'm trying to look at those quickly while staying focused on this. But if you can, go ahead and translate this in, in the chat. I'll give you one more second to try to do that or I'll give you the answers. All right. Mm, let's see. Ms. David Hadrew, can you please make a lesson on medical vocabulary if it goes along with your curriculum? Uh, in Fluent for Life, we have uh, multiple lesson sets about, there's one about going to the doctor, one about getting sick. Uh, I think we have maybe two or three about that. So there's lots of vocabulary about medical stuff. It's a little bit different from, like, if you need to learn specific like highly technical vocabulary, we don't cover that. But again, what we do is focus on people being able to go to the doctor or doctors being able to speak to patients in a regular human way. That's the focus of the program. All right, let's see here. All right, I'm gonna write down the answers and you can check your answers over here. Let's see what we got here. What we got, seven, five, two, uh, this is eight, seven, Six and seven, uh, let's see, two, nine, two, three, six. All right, uh, let's see. So, Dre, let's see, seven, two, nine, two, three, six. Ah, for the bottom one. Yeah, very good. So, Dran uh, has probably seen this example before, all right, but very good. Now, if you're good, some people are just good at memorizing information, and that's great, but most people are not because this is not how we learn correct. You know, this is not how we learn languages, all right? So let me give you a better way of helping you understand these things. Remember, this is not, I'm not teaching you a real language. This is just an example of how people learn languages or even how the brain learns. So I want to give you a feeling. It's a feeling you get when you understand something and when you understand well, then you can use that information. Okay, here we go. So I'll leave, uh, well actually I'll just leave these up here, but let me give you this. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So what I'm doing now, when you, when you recognize this, as soon as you understand, it's a feeling you get of ah. I call this the aha moment. So when you notice something like, ah, oh, look at that, now I got it. So that feeling, as you're reviewing information, you, you should review something enough times until you get that feeling where now you really understand it. Because when you really understand it, then you can start using it without thinking or hesitating or worrying. It's because you, you really feel confident that you'll use something correctly. Okay. So this is a, a simple example. And again, a lot of people, if we just take it and, and use this, they might struggle with this. Uh, but the, the point is really to have people seeing the difference between learning something uh, as, a, as a typical student versus actually making a connection with information. Now, this is using a mnemonic, so I don't, I don't really want to teach people to use mnemonics in this way for language learning, uh, but the point is that you, it's, I'm trying to get you to understand that feeling that comes when you understand something. When you recognize something and like, ah, oh, now I got it. It's that feeling you get when you solve a puzzle. That's the feeling that comes with fluency. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. See if anyone had any questions about this versus that. Give a quick explanation. I know the meaning of these words, but I use them interchangeably, which makes me less confident. Please help, says the Devil King. Well, it, this video is not really about specific grammar points. Like we do things like that um, in Fluent for Life, but in general, it's just what's around you is this, and what's a little bit further away from you is that. But it could be relative. It depends on the situation, but typically what's closer to you is this, what's further away is that. So I could have even these two things like this is a seven and that is a different symbol. So even though they're both very close to me, this one is a little bit further away. So it could be this, 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 that. It doesn't, it doesn't really, really matter. 
all right? But typically it's something that's a little bit further away from me. But it's better to see lots of examples of people doing that rather than try to understand it logically in that way. So you see lots of different people using it and you get a, uh, a much better like a much better understanding of something than you do just getting a, a, like a grammar example. <clears throat> For non-native speakers, aha moments comes when we learn the grammar. It's not just the grammar, it's everything. It's how you pronounce things, what the vocabulary is, how we should speak, what sort of gestures people use when they speak. So Americans and Italians or Japanese, we speak differently, we move differently when we, when we speak. And so you learn all those things, not from a textbook, but by actually seeing examples of it. Okay. All right. 45 minutes so far, and we got through number six. Any questions about that? Hopefully. All right. Yeah, I guess you could think melee versus range. <laughs> that's a good example. Again, that's another good example of that. <clears throat> All right. But the point is that you want to review things. Uh, if you can understand something immediately, that's the best. That's the fastest. You can learn something and see it exactly. It's like if I try to teach you the phrasal verb, take off. So if I take off the cap and put on the cap. So I could take off my shirt and put on my shirt in the same way. Okay? I think people are getting it. Yes, so Dran is correct that even with the aha moment, you should still review many times. It's just helping you get the like hearing it again and again from different people because you could have understanding, but maybe you still struggle if someone, <clears throat> maybe they're uh, like mumbling or something like that in a conversation. So there's still lots of good reasons to review after that. All right. How do you write zero? Are you asking me, Elena, like it is, like a zero? Oh, some people put the slash through it like that. <clears throat> yeah, everybody's getting it. Okay. Uh, moving on to number seven. So really the, the core of how you should be learning, that's getting real English, making sure you get understandable messages, and making sure you get naturally varied review. If you do all of those three things, and you must do all three of them, then you will get fluent. Even if you don't live in an English-speaking country, even if you're not married to an English speaker, or you don't have a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, uh, it, all of those other things, it's not examples, or it's, not, it's not necessary to, uh, to have all those things. It's nice, like you could have a, a wife who speaks or a husband or whatever. My wife doesn't really teach me much Japanese, not directly, so I have to learn, like I, I watch what she says to our kids. So if I ask questions about Japanese, she usually says, I've got no time for that. <laughs> so if I pay attention, then I can understand, and then I can learn more that way, all right? All right, so number seven. So another example of how we go through and how we learn these things is situations, not vocabulary, are the key. So situations, not vocabulary, are the key to understanding. You know, usually when people are learning English as a second language, they begin with a word in their native language, whatever that is, uh, and then we try to translate something into English. So this is going to be a translation over here. We have some word like, uh, let's say, Chinese. So we have a Chinese word over here, and then we've got an English word over here, uh, and then we try to repeat those things again and again. All right, that's typically how people learn uh, learn languages. So again, this is the English as a second, uh, English as a second language way of learning. But what I'm telling you to do is English as a first language. So I'll put ESL up here and EFL over here. And so this is where we begin with a situation and then we watch what people say. We get the vocabulary over here. So we don't begin with the vocabulary. We don't begin with words in a, in a different language. We begin with some situation and then see what people are saying in that situation. Isn't that interesting? So if I go to a store and people are buying things and when I walk up to the counter, I might get like, how are you today? Or what would you like? Or a few other various things that people are saying. And so I get the vocabulary and, that, and the vocabulary might be a couple of different things that we get in that situation. So for that situation, what do people say? I gave a greeting example earlier. So in the situation where you greet someone, hello, 
might be one thing you say hello hi hey howdy how are you how's it going how you been these are lots of different ways where you're expressing that same situation you're greeting someone but you're using different vocabulary so when you learn this way what you're doing is making a single connection between something in your language and something in your or like the target language in this case it's uh it's english so if you, if you forget this word, you lose that connection and that's where you struggle to speak because you forgot the word that you're supposed to say for that situation. But when you learn English as a first language, you get first language lessons, this is where you're actually getting a situation and you're learning lots of different ways of expressing that. So that it's not like a single, a single thing between these. It's actually like you're connected to all this different vocabulary. So maybe you forget one thing in a situation, but you think of something else very quickly because you've learned it the native way. All right. So hopefully this makes sense about the, the difference between trying to learn something as a non-native speaker and trying to learn it as a native speaker. So you don't need to be a native speaker to do this. You just need to learn the native way. You need to get English as a first language lessons. And again, if you're just trying to learn by yourself, you can see this everywhere. Just pay attention to what people say in different situations. What do they say when they're surprised? What do they say when they're happy? What do they say when they're angry? All these different things. Okay? So, situations are the key. I'm trying to get you to think more like a native speaker so you learn that way and that's how you start speaking. Because if you think about your language first, you're going to hurt yourself. You need to think about the situation and really try to think like a native speaker. And that's how you start speaking fluently. All right, let's go back and check chat and make sure everybody is getting this over here. Eunice says, how to understand a language using the method just showed, I mean, the alien language numbers. So in the alien language example, uh, it, was, it was partly a lesson about how uh, typical language learning works, where it's giving you a translation. So we're giving you the, the numbers like the Arabic numbers, and then we're giving you the alien language numbers over here and just helping you translate those and then you just have to remember them. So there's no real connection there. You don't really understand it. It's hard to remember. It's just a very complicated and painful process. But when you get the, the traditional lessons, you're actually, as, as like a native speaker would get them, you have a situation. Like, look, there's a bird in my hand. You, there's a bird in my hand. Uh, do I speak Arabic? No, I do not. Uh, so there's a bird in my hand, and then I, if, I'm, if I'm seeing like lots of birds in different places, then I learn the word bird that way. Okay? So the situation is, it could be like a thing, like this. It could be a physical object, like, what is this thing? So this is an eraser. Eraser. Is this an eraser? No, this is a magnet. But look at that. There's magnets on here, too. Magnet, magnet, magnet. And so when people are learning, if you don't know the word magnet and you hear that, and I show you a bunch of different examples of these, like magnet, 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 then you learn that because you're connecting it with the situation. The physical object is the situation. So rather than trying to learn it through a different language, you're connecting directly with the English. And how you learn is how you speak. So if you connect directly with the language, then you're able to speak directly. You don't have to think and translate things in your head before you speak. Okay? Yes, there's no bird in my hand, but you have to, you can imagine that. But I can just say hand or something, you know, marker or whatever. I can give you an example of that. All right. Make sure everybody is on the same page here. Uh, Dran says, uh, I get what Drew is trying to say about fluency. However, I don't have time to practice or most of the time I get lazy. Yes. So a lot of people like trying to do this by yourself is a pain. <laughs> it's a pain for me even now trying to learn Japanese by myself because I don't have anyone who's teaching me the language. I'm teaching myself. Okay. Make sure my weird my battery is going long. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. 
the point here is that we have like, look, an eraser with some magnets on it. And then we can understand, look at that. Here's another example of that thing, but it's a little bit different. This is naturally varied review. If I just hold up the same object and I say magnet, 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 you don't really know what I'm talking about. I'm not teaching you anything by repeating myself, but you're, you're learning, you're actually building understanding when I show you something different. Look at that. This is a magnet and this is a magnet. Look at those things. What do they do? They let you stick on to certain things. That's what a magnet does. And so you learn that as you see these different examples. All right? So this is, again, like the situation is magnet, and there are lots of different kinds of magnets. But because you're learning like a native, it's much easier to remember that way. All right? All right, let's move on. I think we got everybody. We'll check chat one more time, see if I got, let's see here. Uh, isn't that alien language example you gave a numbers, use the translations, you had an English numbers next to the alien number. Yes. So again, the, the, the translation example is showing you how not to learn a language. So giving you translations, that's what people are typically doing. Uh, but the, the, the kind of lesson itself is really just to give you the aha moment and to, to, to just show everybody what it's like. Ah, okay. Uh, like I understand what something means. So I don't actually recommend you using that for language learning because it's, it's like, okay, we're having, uh, like we're still using some kind of translation there. But the point is you're making a connection in your mind and that connection allows you to, to understand something. It gives you the aha moment, all right? So you should, like, I, I can give you the same thing by, like if I teach you just some new vocabulary, like in an alien language or even in English, and I help you understand that like a native speaker, so you're, you're able to understand it all in English, you get that same aha moment from that. And that's what you should be looking for. So the reason it's difficult to do this by yourself is because it's hard to find the right vocabulary. It's hard to get naturally varied review. It's hard to learn and understand things without someone teaching you. It's really hard to do. And I know because it was hard for me getting fluent in Japanese. <laughs> So if I have somebody like teaching me lessons or something, then yeah, it's, it's much easier and I can be lazy. That's what I wanted to do. That's why I created Fluent for Life. So I could help other people be lazy. <laughs> so I know it's, it's much easier if you have everything just already. I tell you exactly what to learn. Here's how to learn it. Here's how to remember it. Here's the order you should do it in. It's all done for you. So it's much easier than trying to do all that hard work yourself. So yes, I know like it's hard to do. It's possible. It's possible to teach yourself like a native. It's just harder to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, Ellen says, what about uh, if even in a situation we don't understand a phrase, what can we do? Well, you just ask the person if you don't understand something like, what, it, what, was, what does that mean? It's okay to, to ask, you know, ask people what something means. All right, uh, let's see. I have experienced that the languages that are closer to your mother tongue are easy to learn, like my native languages. Yeah, so again, that, that's, that's one way to make a language easier. Like if I'm learning Spanish, so if I say like Univision in English, but it's like Univision in, in Spanish or whatever, like it's, it's basically the same word. I'm just pronouncing it a little bit differently. But uh, it, my point is it doesn't matter. So I, I should logically be able to do the same thing in Japanese or Chinese if I'm learning as a first language. So yes, it's easier because there are some things that you already like know the vocabulary. You just have to learn maybe a little something different. But logically, it's not like from the beginning one language is more difficult than another language. So young kids, they get fluent at the same rate across countries. So it's not like in China, people don't start speaking until they're 10 years old, like little Chinese kids are speaking Chinese, little English speaking kids are speaking English, you know. There might, I don't know, I don't know if there's like some slight variation, but seeing little kids in different countries all speaking, it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. All right, let's see here. And again, I'm trying to go through these quickly over here. Uh, what do I think, says Gansham, about uh, Indian English language, 80% of people follow the British English. Well, if, that, if that's what they use, then, you know, it doesn't matter to me. 
that's what they use. All right, Aiueo uh, says, you are a good speaker. That's a nice name. Are you Japanese? <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of lesson videos on YouTube, but I feel like almost all of them are reading something on a prompter. Only you sound so natural. Well, as I'm just speaking to you right now. Now, some people prefer that kind of lesson where it's like me reading something and we're and I do have some of those videos on the channel where I'm trying to be very specific but I think it's really important for people to hear how I normally speak uh, and so I get you know some examples of that or, or just so you can see me speaking fluently as an example for yourself so you could watch this a few times and think about the same idea of situations so when Drew is thinking a little bit or hesitating or explaining something, what words does he use? So you can learn those same things from that example. Uh, in the same way we can learn collocations and words that come together. Yeah, same thing. So Carlos speaks Spanish. Let's see, I know I now often watch videos on home workout for beginners just to learn the way they speak. It is different. Yes, so that's an example of naturally varied review. So if we watch 10 different people doing an exercise video, like how to do a push-up or a pull-up or something, even very basic, it's the same thing I did with that espresso video. So it's just showing you there's not one way to express yourself. All right, Sheila's very excited over there. Hello again with lots of hearts over there. <laughs> All right, uh, Abdel Motaleb, let's see. I think the aha moment comes when we feel the word deplorable the same as you feel the word love or F word or non-native speakers, is that what you mean? No, it just means you understand something. It's, it's, it's the feeling you get when you solve a puzzle, when you're trying to figure something out, so your brain is giving you information. I'll give you another example of this because it's important for people to understand this. Uh, so if I give you, if I'm teaching you a word in an alien language, let's see how many examples you need to understand something. So this is a word in an alien language. This is not a real word. This is not English or Japanese or French or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to put something in here. Let's see. Uh, we'll just say this is a, uh, a tan. So that's our alien word, and I've given you a picture of something. Now, what does, what does tan mean, do you think? What does tan mean? There could be a whole bunch of different things, and this is not colored either, but it could mean the color. It could be maybe what you think that is. It could be the name of that thing. It could be lots of different things. All right, but usually if you try to remember back when you're learning your native language, and this is the same thing when you're learning English, so Aran says duck, maybe, bird. So again, we've got uh, Aran and Carlos said two different things. So that means me being a teacher, that's a problem for me because I'm communicating something, I'm showing you something, but it's hard to understand like what that what that thing is. Let's see, Dren, Dren are you in the program? Are you in Fluent for Life? Because we have uh, like there are lesson guides and there's a daily schedule in the program. Let me know if you're actually a member of the program. Drew, would you please uh, more about Frederick? I would get it uh, if I had buy. If I let's see, what would I get if I buy the product? Uh, Drant, send us send us an email, and we'll we'll just we'll send you the the link to that. But there's a daily schedule and just going through the lessons. But very very quickly, just so you understand it, all you do is you pick a specific lesson set that you want to focus on for the month, and then as you go through the lessons, you're getting naturally varied review by going through each lesson in a different way each day. So you would start with. Uh, the grammar focus lesson, typically, uh, you would go through on the first day, just watch it. On the second day, you would just listen to it. On the third day, just read the transcript. On the fourth day, maybe you would try write some sections of it and then go to the next lesson in the set and then just go through the set in that way. 
So some things, if they're really easy to understand, if you feel like, wow, this is easy and I can use all this, then fine, you can move on to the next thing. But the point is not to rush through it because the lessons get a little bit more difficult as they go uh, and then you finally have the conversation lesson and you watch that and that may be more uh, that you're spending time on. So the conversation takes all of those things that you practiced and it shows you how they all work together. So you're getting some culture, some vocabulary, some grammar, some pronunciation, all of that is all shown in the real conversation. So another thing you can do to test yourself, if you like, is watch the conversation first. So pick a lesson set, whichever one you like. There are 100 of them to choose from, and you can learn with whatever you're interested in. We have so much content because we want people to choose what they're interested in. So you, you pick a lesson set, uh, and then you can, uh, just as a test for yourself, watch the conversation first. You might not understand everything, or even if you do, you might still not feel confident using a lot of that vocabulary in, no, it's my pleasure. Uh, you might still not feel confident using all of that in your conversations. But it's just a test for you to see how much you improve. So watch the conversation first, and then go back and actually watch like all the videos go through the steps. And then when you get to the conversation again, you will notice, wow, I really improved a lot. You understand a lot more, you're ready for the kinds of things that the speakers are using, and you will feel much more confident about using those things in your conversation. So that's how I use the program. All right, so just getting back to this example very quickly. So we had a few things, let's see, owl, Gansham said, or bird or whatever. All right, now if I use a different word, or I'm going to give you another example. This is also tan. It's the same word, but I'm going to give you a different example. This is naturally varied review. Uh, let's say we're going to use, uh, here we go. So this is tan, and this is tan also. Now what do you think tan means? What is my target word, do you think? I'll give you another one. Yeah, so Dran says animal, animal. So now people, what, Nils is in the house. Yes, and now people are starting to get it, all right? So the, the point of this exercise is the naturally varied review is actually what helps you understand what that is. So now everybody is on the same page. Everyone's like, okay, well, if I just see one example, I don't really understand what that means. Now, Ms. David could say small animals. So me thinking as a teacher, uh, yes, it also means I can't draw, that's true. And, and so I could like draw a picture of a shark uh, or something else like that, uh, just to show you that it's not about just small animals. But I could mean that, that's correct. So the point is, I, I want to make it very clear, and you get clear usually by having a few different examples of something, usually better pictures. So what we do actually, uh, opossum, <laughs> yes, that, so that's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be a mouse, I'm drawing a mouse over here, uh, but yes, it, it doesn't matter, it could be a, 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 an opossum for, for, the, for our example here. But the point is, uh, when you're learning a language, it's really the different examples, and this is just one example of naturally varied review. So another example is if you hear something, like someone says, like, and I'm like, what, 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 did, that, what did that person say? I didn't hear, but maybe someone else says the same thing, and now it's more clear. Like an example I've told on my videos or like on the YouTube channel before uh, is there's a, a notification for a toilet near uh, or at the train station by my house. And for a long time, I would walk by and I would hear it just, I, I couldn't hear it clearly. So this is a Japanese notification. And then I asked my wife, I said, what is that saying? And she was like, oh, that's like, that's like tamak tiktoide. And I was like, ah, okay, like now I, now, I can, now I can hear it clearly. It's funny how that works. So when you're, when you're not ready for that thing, then, then like it, it just is almost impossible for you to figure that out. It's like the example I've given before uh, about the, like the, the guys uh, or people just passing a, uh, a basketball back and forth. And then when you ask people how many times, I say, please count 
how many times uh, the people were passing the basketball. And so you say, okay, the, they passed the basketball 10 times. And after that, I say, uh, did you see the gorilla? And you say, what? I, wasn't, I didn't see any gorilla at all. I'm just watching you know, like people passing a basketball. And it's because you're not prepared for that thing that you don't recognize it. But there was a person in a gorilla suit that walks by and he's like, hey, how's it going? You know, he doesn't say anything, but he walks up. He's nice and clear in front of everybody. But because you're not paying attention for that, a lot of people don't notice it. Okay. So these are all examples of the same thing. This is how the mind works. So the mind wants to understand. Your mind wants to understand. Okay. And if you don't understand with the first example, you usually need some different ones. But what, what people typically do is they just repeat the same thing. So if I show you this thing, and here's like a flashcard, it's the same flashcard again and again, it's not going to help you understand that thing. We're in the same place, I'm just repeating something. But here if I show you something different, but it's related, now the brain is trying to solve a puzzle. And the brain really enjoys that. And when you understand, you get that aha moment like, yes, now I, I've solved the puzzle. I understand what the word means. Now we can communicate with each other. All right. Now, I don't know why, like, there are sometimes movies about, like, teaching aliens about, you know, trying to teach them our language or whatever. It'd be, like, very simple to do it this way. All right. Now, hopefully, hopefully this makes sense. All right. So the point is, when you're getting naturally varied review, it's helping you understand things like a native, not like a student, because we really want you to understand, like, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? It's all the same thing. It probably means animal. And when you use it correctly, then you feel great. Like, yes, I understood that, and I used it correctly and fluently. That's how you get fluent. So you become fluent in individual words and phrases like this. Now, just uh, I think someone asked me about Frederick. So Frederick works the same way. We're teaching you vocabulary and pronunciation, uh, but you're also learning vocabulary, and you have different examples of the vocabulary for all the words. Some of them are pictures. Some of them are animations. But you learn the vocabulary that same way. So if you want to download Frederick and teach yourself the same thing. You can actually give the app to a small child or even someone who doesn't know any English at all and they would be able to teach themselves English with the app. That's how it works. So it's the world's first system that actually gives you English as a first language lessons. All right. It's focused on reading and pronunciation, but anybody in the world can use it and lots of people do. All right. So let's get done with this here. Uh, let's see. So psychotic teacher says, as a native speaker, I can't understand half the things Denzel Washington says in a movie. Yes. So, you know, you have to be used to, you have to be used to that. You have to be prepared for that. Uh, and some people, <clears throat> maybe they can't hear what he's saying because they're just not prepared for that. And it happens. Uh, and also, like, I could not understand maybe some like people in the southern part of the United States because they speak differently than I do, even though we're both native speakers of the language. All right, so pronunciation uh, is going to be a little bit different. All right, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, so I'm probably not going to get better at uh, drawing pictures on here, but I think everybody is getting it. All right, so we got through seven, we got eight, nine, 10 left to go. Already 72 minutes into this video. Oh my goodness, I knew it was going to be a long one. This last three should be pretty quick though. So all the, the kind of deeper stuff we have covered already, really the most important thing to remember is that how you learn is how you speak. It's not who you're married to or where you live uh, or what private lessons you take, it's just how you learn. It's really that simple. And that means that you can do that, uh, really you can do that anywhere. All right, so let's talk about number eight very quickly. So the next important thing you should learn over here, uh, memory. Uh, really the key to memorizing things, uh, and I've already shown you a few examples of this, is categories. So when we, when we think about like translating from one thing into another, so if I'm using uh, let's say I'm, I'm just using Japanese as an example. So I've got a Japanese word and I translate that into English. When I'm trying to think in English and speak in English, I'm going to have trouble because there's already a word there in my native language for what I'm learning or what I want to say. 
So I will think first about the word in my native language, and then I will translate, and then I will speak. That's typically what people are doing. And some people can do this very quickly, but you shouldn't have to do this at all if you're learning as a first language, all right? So if you want to remember things, and I just want to cover this very quickly because I, I have a whole program about how to remember any English word. And even on YouTube, you can find that if you look for the video, uh, how to learn, or it's like learn 10,000 English words or something like that. I forget the title of the video, but watch that video and it explains this in more detail. But the basic idea is that the mind works through thinking about creating categories. So let's say as like a business example, uh, a company would create a computer. So let's say this is company A. So whenever you think about buying a computer, you would probably buy that computer from company A because company A created the idea of a computer. So company A wants you to know like, this is a computer, this is what it does, you should buy that computer from us. So if you want to sell computers, if you just try to sell like the same kind of computer, it's going to be more difficult for you because most people know already about company A. So the smart thing to do is to create something different like a desktop computer. And so now company B creates a desktop computer. It's a new category of thing. And it becomes much more easy uh, for your brain to understand and to recognize that information because it's new. It's a new category. And the amazing thing is that like your brain can have really an infinite number of these different categories. You could have lots of different kinds of computers. You could have a tablet computer or a nano computer or lots of different kinds of computers. But the point is, if you create a new category of that thing, it becomes much easier to remember. And that's why the companies that are doing this, they want to create a new category of thing, and that makes it memorable for the people buying that stuff. So companies are doing this. I call this the billion dollar memory secret because lots of companies are doing this. And if you want to remember words much more quickly or much more easily to recall them easily, this is what we're doing. We're creating categories for those things. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now again, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through each one of these because I've created videos about them. You can learn more about these. This is also in Fluent for Life, uh, but for people who are just interested in that, you can click on the, uh, just look in videos on our channel about that. And hopefully that makes sense for people. Uh, let's see, Gansham says, the naturally very review will naturally elevate fluency. That's a good way to put it, all right? So that's about memory. Number nine, another quick win thing for people now that you understand the foundation of learning, how you learn is how you speak. So number nine, uh, if you would like to do one thing to improve, just learn phrasal verbs. Now, I talk about phrasal verbs a lot, and they are a common and popular thing to learn because they cover everything, like uh, number one that I showed at the beginning of this video, the uh, English fluency profile. So all of the different things, your pronunciation, your grammar, your listening, uh, your general fluency and confidence, phrasal verbs can improve all of those things. And so it's really the one thing, uh, if you're trying to improve as quickly as possible, that you can just learn just this, learning phrasal verbs, and also you notice they're very easy to learn as a native, okay? So I'm learning some valuable, useful vocabulary that people use every day, and I'm also able to understand it the same way children do. So very young children, they begin learning phrasal verbs very young, like one year old, two years old. Uh, what are the most used phrasal verbs? I don't know what they are offhand. You can probably Google that, but you would, it's probably the things that people are doing every day, stand up, sit down, those kinds of things. So the things that people would say to children, but you can Google that and just get a list. The important thing is not to try to memorize them, it's to understand them like a native. So to learn them as a first language, just like this. So like take off and put on. And the naturally varied review comes when I do like take off and put on with something else. Like I take off my hat and put on my hat. Or I take off my glasses and put on my glasses. The same thing. 
Yes, some people like my drawings. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to draw well because I'm just trying to draw quickly. But it would be nice to have uh, better images, basically. But in Frederick, we did take time with that. I spent lots of time finding the right images, drawing the right images, and so everything in Frederick looks very good. All right, because I'm taking time to do it. All right, you can learn languages, nosing phrasal verbs, listening to knaves. Uh, you would, mm, there, 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 are, there are lots of things you would still, uh, oh, without, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, you can. So there, there, are, there are always different ways to pronounce things or to say things. So if you, like, I could, instead of using the word stand up, I could say, like, elevate yourself or something. You know, it's, it, it, would, it would sound a little bit awkward, but it's possible to communicate without using phrasal verbs. Um, but phrasal verbs allow you to take a lot of simple vocabulary and just connect them together, like, like Lego pieces. So you don't have to know uh, tons of difficult vocabulary. You only need to know a few words, and then how do you put them together? So when you start thinking more like a native, then you can start putting those together like a native, and that's the same thing. Adrian says, look up to Google, is that correct? You would say, look it up in Google or look it up on Google. Both of those are fine. So pick it up, drop something off. Yeah, so that's another thing. So I can, if I can think about, again, uh, picking something up, like physically lifting something or leaving something in a different place. And so as you see those different things, it's, it's much easier to learn them like a native, and phrasal verbs are easy to learn that way. And so you begin with a simple thing like, you know, I'm like taking off or putting off or, or putting on. Uh, and then I can learn uh, more difficult uses of those same things. Like, wow, his career is really taking off. All right. So it's, it's different, like take off the cap and like take off your career is taking off. So you can think about that like an airplane is physically on the runway like that. And it goes off. Same idea. So when phrasal verbs is another word between, yeah. So again, phrasal verbs, and this is why it's important to get naturally varied review, because you want to hear lots of different examples about when, uh, when like you would be using a phrasal verb when it's separable, when you can separate it, and when you cannot. So oftentimes you can or cannot, it just depends. And rather than learning a bunch of rules for that, you just need to get lots of examples. That's going to help you understand it a lot more easily. Okay. And last one, number 10. We're almost finished. Look at that, 81 minutes so far. What time is it? I think we're doing okay. All right, so number 10 is you can get fluent by, by yourself. So everything I've explained thus far, all these different tips, you can do all of this by yourself. It is possible to do it. Uh, it's tricky, and I know, again, as I mentioned earlier in the video about me learning Japanese, I don't have a specific Japanese teacher. Really, I have Japan as the teacher, uh, and then I have to be very smart about how I get examples and how I find naturally varied review and all of that, uh, but it is possible to do. And so you don't need to live in an English-speaking country. You don't need to be married to an English speaker. You don't need to have a native friend. You don't even really need to speak. The point is just to get enough examples, just like I gave with the uh, example of animal in that native uh, or in the alien language, you didn't actually speak to me. You were just learning that. And because you understood, now you feel confident about using it. All right, so the actual speaking that comes, like speaking practice and all of that stuff is fine if you want to do it, but the most important part is making sure you understand what you're saying. If you're just repeating things and you don't really feel confident about what you're learning, you're just wasting your time, all right? So please don't do that. Please learn English as a first language. Get English as a first language lessons if you want to become fluent. That's the point of this video and really just showing you all these different tips, they are all variations on this one idea, but hopefully this makes sense. All right, Xavier says, who created phrasal verbs? Where is he? I would like to tell him off. No, don't do, phrasal verbs are great. <laughs> phrasal verbs are, it's, it's again, it's a way of taking a lot of simple things. It's like if I, if I give you, uh, if you're a chef in a, in a restaurant, you've got eggs, you've got milk, 
you got butter, you got, uh, I don't know, maybe like two or three other things. You can combine these in different ways to make all kinds of food. Okay? So if, if, I, if I do like eggs and milk, maybe I can make an omelet or something. Or if I do eggs in, I don't know, eggs in sugar, I can make something else. All right? Is there always a word equal to a phrasal verb? Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. But most people, they, like, they will either just have a single word equivalent or they will just have to explain it. <laughs> and so the phrasal verb is typically easier for people to understand. But the point is, phrasal verbs are like this. It's like in, on, at, with, or whatever. Like, and I can combine these in different ways. So usually a verb and a preposition, and I'm combining them like to go on or to stand up or to fall over or to come with or whatever, different things like that. It's just me taking simple vocabulary that I can combine in different ways, rather than trying to learn a whole bunch of difficult vocabulary. So really, I promise you, phrasal verbs are easy. Uh, it just depends on how you learn them. So actually, uh, Dran, if you've not gone through that program already, uh, Visual Guide to Phrasal Verbs is also in Fluent for Life. Uh, what are your go-to phrasal verbs? Well, it, it depends on the situation. Uh, so if I'm using, it also depends on who I'm speaking with. I don't really use a lot of phrasal verbs in, in these videos because I want to make sure people understand what I'm talking about. There will be some phrasal verbs, some basic ones, uh, but uh, there may be higher level phrasal, phrasal verbs that I, don't, that I don't use that are a bit more uh, difficult to understand, but it depends on the situation. All right, native English speakers sense the meaning of the English words. Yes, and so the whole point of this, learning as an English speaker, so learning English like in uh, the same way a native would, that gives you that sense, what Krashen calls the uh, sense of correctness. So you feel that, again, it's a feeling you get like, that feels correct or that feels incorrect. So often native speakers, they can't explain grammar the same way a teacher could, but they know what's correct because it feels right. And so that's what I'm trying to give you uh, when I give you English as a first language lessons. So the point is to help you feel, ah, I get, I get it, I understand. You get that aha moment. All right, 86 minutes so far. Oh my goodness, it's 11.30. Hopefully everyone is doing all right over there. I think I got everybody. If you still have a question about anything I've covered so far, let me know. Uh, but again, uh, it is possible to do all these things by yourself, but remember, 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 the most important thing is to learn it as a native. So to get English as a first language lessons rather than ESL or English as a second language lessons. This is how you actually become a fluent speaker. You become a confident speaker when you understand the language, not by repeating it or doing flashcards or exercises or any of those other things. The point is to understand something really well and that's when you can talk about it. It's just like anything else in your everyday life. Maybe you, uh, I don't know, maybe you, you know, you learn about, you know, some, some hobby you're interested in. And as you know more about it, you can speak more about it. When you just start, then you don't really know much about it. You can't do it well. You can't explain it well. But as you know it more, as you understand it better, you can communicate about it well. All right, if there are no more questions though, let's see, Ms. David said, we can understand your drawing. It's the most important thing. <laughs> I think it's easier for you to get your point across. Some artists aren't that clear uh, in their art. Yes, I suppose that's true. Yes, I understand. My writing also is not very clear, uh, but I try to read what I write so make sure uh, people can understand me over there. So Yusuf says, I'm, you would say, I am an, Intermediate, or I guess I, I am intermediate. Yeah, I guess you could say that I'm intermediate. And I can reach a good level in just five months. How can I practice all of that alone? Well, again, like you, number one, you need to be learning real English. So whatever those examples are, so whatever the uh, the the particular thing you're interested in, whatever that topic is. So try not to think about the English language and think about what you're interested in, like fixing motorcycles or, I don't know, making stuffed animals or whatever. It, whatever the topic is, it could be something you're interested in for your job or some video game or whatever. But get lots of content from native speakers about that stuff. 
And then if, if you're trying to learn it by yourself, then you need to figure out what the words mean. You need to look them up and try to understand. That's again why it's more difficult to do this by yourself. So I do all the hard work for you in Fluent for Life. So the people who are in Fluent for Life, they get all that done for them. All the information is already organized. All the teaching is already done. All you have to do is like sit back and get fluent. But it is possible to do it by yourself. That's the same way I got fluent. It just takes more time. So if you watch, uh, search my channel for the espresso video, how to make espresso, and that's one example of this. So you could watch a bunch of different videos on YouTube about the same topic, uh, and that would be a great way to teach yourself in English the same way a native is learning. So often people, like if I, if I want to buy a new car, I might watch a few different people videos or I might uh, like read some different articles about that. I'm getting different information from different people, but it's related. So those specific words and phrases about that, some of them will be more common. I might hear, like if I'm talking about cars, people will talk about the engine or the mileage or other things like that. And so I'll hear those words again and again, just like I did for that espresso video. So before making that espresso video, I didn't know anything about making espresso. I don't know, or I didn't know uh, what espresso is. Uh, and I just, I thought it was like a different kind of coffee and I don't know how people make it, but even just watching four different people making espresso, now I understand what it is. It's like basically coffee that you press and run steam through it. <laughs> and so when you're, when you're learning that, you learn the vocabulary. I, and I learned a lot of vocabulary that I didn't know, even as a native speaker. So I know the word espresso or like cup of espresso or whatever, but, uh, I didn't know anything about that. But after I watched those, I really did uh, understand a lot more. <clears throat> so it's the same idea. So again, this is possible. Uh, for the people who would like help, who really just want to get fluent as fast as possible, you can click on the link in the description below this video, and that will take you to information about Fluent for Life. Uh, let's see. I always watch the native speaker does and not use the hard vocabulary as far as observations sometimes they will use. Yeah. And so remember, there are lots of different ways you can express yourself. So even if a native speaker says this, you could still say something different. Neil says that thank you for the lesson, Drew. It's my pleasure. Carlos, I'm 43 years old. Can I improve my English? Yes. So I am 42. Uh, and this month I will be 43 and I'm still learning new Japanese all the time, and I'm getting fluent in new vocabulary and grammar and other things like that because of how I learn. So it's more difficult for me because I don't have a teacher. I don't have a program like Fluent for Life in Japanese. If someone makes that, let me know because I would love to have something like that. Uh, but again, that's how we get fluent. So if you can do the same thing, it doesn't matter how old you are, you are probably learning new things, so new vocabulary all the time in your native language, which is uh, Spanish, I think. So if you are learning new things in your native language, you can easily learn new things in English too. Uh, let's see. So, uh, is that Ida? Ida? If I do naturally varied review by myself, should I focus on the situation, for example, making espresso, rather than focus on the word, like you taught about the word varied before? Well, it, it's all different examples of that. The point is just to understand something very well. So there are different kinds of naturally varied review. One of them is hearing the same word or the same phrase or grammar spoken by different people. So your mom says hello, your dad says hello, your brother says hello, your teacher says hello. Those are all different examples of that same thing. Or you can take a greeting, like a situation, and get different people responding or, or saying something about that thing. So it's, it's not just one way to do it. So you could learn about a topic. You could learn about particular vocabulary. Uh, I know Euglish is an example of that. Like you can look up uh, specific vocabulary uh, like if I type in something in Uglish, I think it's like Uglish.com, um, I can get examples of other people doing that. So they find that same phrase in uh, different YouTube videos. So uh, Uglish is, is helpful if you already know the vocabulary and you just want different examples of it. Uh, I don't think they do like naturally varied review by type though, where it's like you know what this phrase is, but now show me a different way to express that same situation. I don't think they do that. Uh, but that would be enough. That's like what we do in um, Influent for Light. So you're getting lots of different examples in different ways. Uh, but again, it is possible to do that by yourself. 
Uh, and the teacher again, Abdel, get yourself an American English teacher that teaches English as a first language and make your life easier. If you do it by yourself, it can take years. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of people, I mean, even, even if you get a personal teacher, uh, they might not teach you English as a first language. And they might not even know what that is. <laughs> So if I just like like regular English teachers, I got I got an email from a guy uh, a couple of days ago who was thinking he was like you know why don't people teach English as a first language and I guess he's looking on YouTube to see if anybody has done that and he found me and was just like wow like all this like it's you know you've been doing all this stuff for years and this is what I've been thinking about but very few people are actually learning that way or teaching that way and the reason is because it's just not necessary to do. So most people, especially in young grades in elementary school or whatever, when they're learning uh, their native language or when they're learning English as like an elementary school student or junior high school student, they don't actually have uh, a speaking test. So they only need to know, I have to memorize some vocabulary and then write it down on a test. Uh, so it doesn't really matter when, uh, you know, for, for the purposes of, of, of them being able to speak, it's just not necessary. But for a lot of people, they don't think it's possible to do that. So if I say, hey, uh, you can learn the language the same way a native does, people just, they're like, no, 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 that's not possible to do, and they don't listen. So it's, it's been, it's taken me many years to just like, how do I explain this to people that it's possible to do? And so I just started calling it English as a first language because that's like people are open to that idea. If I say learn like a native, then people don't believe it, even though it's basically the same thing. It's actually a little bit faster to learn English as a first language uh, because you're getting uh, structured lessons rather than just like actually how natives learn, which is not very structured. Uh, so you can get fluent faster than a native if you learn English as a first language. Drew, can you teach how to focus? How to teach how to focus on what? <laughs> well, fo focus just comes from like being interested in something. Uh, and you have to have like a greater interest in something than your like laziness. So we all have a natural level of laziness. But like if you're interested in doing something, you're like, wow, I, I need to like I need to be more interested than lazy about doing something. And then I can focus on whatever. So even me for teaching, it's taking me. I don't know, many years. I've been teaching for 20 years and I'm still trying to explain this idea to people. <laughs> so like me being able to focus on that, it's just like because I'm, it's a really interesting problem for me to try to solve like a puzzle, you know, like how do we, how do we get people to understand this idea of learning English as a first language and more people are starting to understand it, but you have to be uh, able to focus uh, and maintain that. Carl Drew, what kind of situation when to use come across versus run into? Uh, I would like Google those, and you will see different situations and see see what happens. So usually, like like come across is like I'm just kind of walking and I see something, I notice it. But run into like it could be, it could be. It's been, I'll, I'll let you let you learn it like a native rather than me try to explain it right now. Uh, but just look up different examples of that, and you will see. Like who are using those and when are they using it? Why are they using it? You will start to understand. Xavier, is there a list of the most common phrasal verbs used every day by native speakers? Uh, I don't know if such a list exists. I bet probably there are uh, lists like that. But if you if you try to memorize those and you can't use it like a native, you're wasting your time. So it's better to learn a few things and, and just start understanding it like a native. That's what we do in the visual guide to phrasal verbs. Nils asks, when exactly is your birthday? It is September 21st. So that's uh, like a week, a week from today. Uh, where can I found or where can I find a partner for practicing my speaking, says Jose. Uh, as I explained in this video, a speaking practice partner is not necessary. It's nice if you want one, uh, but a majority of your time should be spent understanding the language like a native. Uh, and then you don't worry about trying to find speaking partners because you just start speaking with people. Why is spelling contest so popular in American schools? Uh, it's probably because spelling is tricky. <laughs> so anything that's difficult, we create a contest around it, kind of. God, you appreciate it. All right. Dan, uh, Dran does uh, do meditation. <laughs> yes, I think it's more difficult. Like meditation becomes a difficult thing for people who can't focus already. It's more like find something that really captures your interest. 
and then you don't need to, you don't need effort to sit and try to focus on something. All right, Sandra says, thank you very much. All right, it looks like that is the end of the video. Thank you very much. Glad everybody enjoyed this. I recommend you go back and watch this again. Drew, can you explain? Get a hold of. Get a hold of yourself, Drew. Get a hold of, like this. I'm getting a hold of. Remember, go back and watch the visual guide to phrasal verbs in your account, Dran, so you will see something like to get a hold of, and then you understand it physically, and then you can think of like get a hold of something like ah, to understand it uh, or to comprehend. You understand the more figurative uses of that thing. But go watch that series of videos if you have not watched them already. And anyone else who would like to join and start learning, what? Mine is September 17th. Look at that. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to everyone. I'm sure there are probably many people, you know, watching out there that has, you know, there's only 12 months, so <laughs> somebody else on here. Uh, thank you, uh, and happy birthday in advance. It's my pleasure. All right, I do appreciate what you do. Thank you again, Dran, for enjoying the program. Let me know. Uh, just send us an email. Tell us more about when you join. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know how your progress has been going. I'm glad to see you in these videos, uh, and if you know other people, let them know about us. Do you like baseball? What's your favorite team? Uh, I used to play baseball. I don't really watch it anymore. I don't care. I like going to baseball games, but all right. Let's make a birthday party. <laughs> all right. Well, see if you can make a birthday party in, uh, and take a picture. You could send that to us. All right. We're, we're going to grasp the strategy. All right. You guys need to let me leave. <laughs> All right, so remember, uh, go back, review this video. This is really the most important idea is that you need to understand English like a native, and you do that by getting English as a first language lessons. It's really that simple. So you can either do that by yourself or have someone like me help you. Uh, but either way, that's how you learn. That's how you get fluent, and you really will become a much more confident speaker if you do. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video.